And let me say to the Southern Baptist of Texas Convention, I see God in you also. Amen. It's been a wonderful joy uh, to be here with you on last night and again on today, giving obedience to God, my Father, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Savior of my life. To my friend and brother, Dr. Jim Richards, thank you, sir, for this wonderful, wonderful privilege, my brother, that you've once again given to me. As I said last night, Dr. Richards have supported me through the years, and uh, even when I was uh, contemplating running for this position, uh, he was one that encouraged me uh, uh, to go forth, Fred, because I was still debating about it. I was uh, still, still trying to rebuild our city, rebuild our church in New Orleans as a result of Hurricane Katrina, and I uh, didn't think I would have the time to do it and the energy to do it. And so, uh, but Jim was one of those guys that said, man, we, we, we need you. You can do it. Pray for me. And uh, they did it. Judge Pressler was another one, man. Thank you. We owe, I owe so much to Judge Pressler and uh, his uh, 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 dependability and just all that he's done for this convention uh, through the years. I, uh, I talked to six former presidents uh, before I ran for this position just to find out about my schedule, you know, how busy I would be, how long I'd be away from a church, and how often I would be gone, how often I would be on the road, and, and all of them lied. All of them lied to me. <laughs> all six of them lied to me. But John, I think they wanted me to do this so bad that they just told me what I wanted to hear. What I wanted to hear. But, uh, but I have just been blessed uh, to be a part. I'm honored to serve as your president, and I'm just thankful for this privilege that God has given to me. I want to thank uh, honor also President Terry Turner of the State Convention, all the pastors of all the churches that are assembled here on this today. Thank you so very much. We know we have a time, uh, a time that we have to get back to the session. And uh, I, I, I'm not preaching today. I'm just I'm the speaker, amen, for the cooperative program luncheon. Uh, uh, so I just want to thank God for this privilege. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your attendance. There are three primary reasons that we're at this luncheon today. First of all, to enjoy the food that has been shared for us, for the nourishment of our bodies, and it was pretty good food. My first time eating lime vinaigrette dressing. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. <laughs> Uh, uh, secondly, it's to enjoy the fellowship. Uh, uh, we've had a wonderful time. I've heard laughter and joy all across the, this room on, on today, and that's what it's all about. Amen. Enjoying the fellowship of brothers and sisters that you may not see on a regular basis, but you have an opportunity to share with them. We're here to enjoy the food, enjoy the fellowship. But then thirdly, we're here to focus on the importance of giving to the cooperative program. We're here to share the important focus on the importance of giving to the cooperative program. Now most of you, not all of you, know that the cooperative program is how Southern Baptist churches carry out our mission given to us, not by Dr. Richards, not by the pastors of the churches of this convention, not by Frank Page, but the, uh, the mission that's given to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave us this mission in Matthew chapter 28, Verses 19 and 20, we say, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. We are fulfilling the mission that God pastors, that God churches, that God members have given to us when we became a part of the body of Christ and specifically of the Southern Baptist Convention. Since 1925, the purpose of the cooperative program has been that we need every church in every city. We need every church in every county. We need every church in the state uh, uh, of states of the Southern Baptist Convention to work together toward a common goal of, of sharing the gospel, hear me well, to every person on the planet. Let me say that again. Since 1925, the purpose of the cooperative program has been that we need every church in every city, every church in every county, every church in every state of the Southern Baptist Convention to work together toward a common goal of sharing the gospel, of sharing the good news to every person on the planet. That's a huge undertaking. That's a huge uh, task. That's a big assignment. However, ladies and gentlemen, that's the assignment that God has given us, and that's the assignment that we have accepted as people of the Southern Baptist Convention to share the gospel with every person on the planet, every person in this world. So the question at this luncheon, the question that I've been challenged to challenge you with is, how do we do this? 
Jeff Pressler, how do we pull this thing off? How in the world can we, Richard, how in the world can we, Terry, how in the world can we, Tom, how can we do this for such a monumental task of spreading the gospel across the world? God expects us as believers and particularly of Southern Baptists to reach the world with the life-changing, transforming power of the gospel. Well, that's the genius of the cooperative program. That's the amazing process of the cooperative program. The cooperative program is designed to realize that we can accomplish far more together than we can alone. That's the, that's the genius of, this pro, of, the, of the CP. The genius of this is that we can accomplish more together than we can alone. I applaud the churches that we just are honored with, the, with the, the gifts of giving and how well they have done. I applaud the top 10 churches in the, in the state of Texas. But guess what? They can't do it by themselves. We honor them today. We thank God for their faithfulness. We thank God for their commitment. Thank God for their sacrifices. But those 10 churches cannot win Texas by themselves. They cannot win America by themselves. Uh, we need everybody to come together and realize that if Southern Baptists of Texas are going to reach this state and if Southern Baptists uh, of Convention is going to reach America and the world, we can do far more together than we can ever do alone. Think about this. There is no way that one church can reach the entire state of Texas. However, if every church in every county of Texas if every church in every city of Texas, and if every church that is represented at this luncheon here this afternoon will come together and combine resources, come together and combine talents, come together and combine their ministries, then it certainly can happen that we can reach the state of Texas. Well, my brothers and sisters, in like manner, every church of the Southern Baptist Convention would come together, combine our resources, combine our talents, combine our ministries. I have no doubt in my mind, Dr. Jim, I have no doubt, Brother Bob, in my mind, I have no doubt Southern Baptist Texas in my mind that we can carry out the great commission that God has given to us. That's how we're going to do it. So the question needs to be asked today at this luncheon of every individual at every church seated in this room today. Why should I give my tithes and offering to my local church? Why should I as an individual give my tithes and offerings to the church that I'm a part of? And then every pastor in here needs to ask the question, why should I as a pastor put corporate program giving of funds uh, in the church budget year after year after year. Well, let me suggest three reasons why you should do it. Number one, you should do it, first of all, because of external reasons. The first reason you should give your uh, uh, tithes and offerings, the first reason you should uh, put corporate program giving in your budget is because of external reasons. Jesus said, go out into all the world. Go out to the four corners of the world. The cooperative program money you give will help us through the International Mission Board to send missionaries to every unreached people group around this world. Listen to me well. The CP money that you're giving, the cooperative program money that you're giving to your local church and then to the old a convention, a, goals, a percentage of it goes to the uh, International Mission Board led by, led by Tom Ellip so that we can then send missionaries across the world to reach unreached people group. Right now we have about 5,000 missionaries across the world sharing the gospel to the lost. And ladies and gentlemen, think about this. Every time someone across the world receive the gospel. Every time someone across the four corners of this world receive the gospel in any part of this world, guess what? You are part of that victory. You are part of that decision. You are part because your cooperative program funds and giving were part of that person's salvation. So when lost folk are saved in Africa, you are part of that. When lost folk are saved in Asia, you are part of that. When lost folk are saved in Russia, you are a part of that. Because every dollar your church gives to the cooperative program, a percentage of that goes to the IMB, the International Mission Board for Foreign Missions, in June of this year. 
in Houston, Texas, Brother Preston, or we'll be in your hometown. Uh, when Tom Elder stands up before the Southern Baptist Convention and gives his report for the IMB, when he stands up and shares about all the lost people across the world that have given their heart and given their life to Jesus Christ across the world in Africa and Asia and Russia and other places, guess what? You can stick your chest out. You can smile because you are part of that through your cooperative program giving. Ladies and gentlemen, the, re the first reason you and I should give to a cooperative program is because of external reasons, because we're reaching people across the world. But then there's a second reason that you and I should give the recovery program. The second reason you and I should give funds are in your budget, in your local churches for the recovery program. Not only for, only for external reasons, but secondly for internal reasons. For internal reasons. Not only do we need to reach people in the world, but we also need to reach lost people in our nation. As I told you last night, our nation is in trouble. Our society is in trouble. Our cities are in trouble. Our, our states are in trouble. And if we're going to reach them, it's not going to happen by who's in Washington, D.C. It's not going to happen through the government. It's not going to happen through the U.S. Congress or U.S. Senate. It's not going to happen through the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to reach America, it's going to take the people of God to take the word of God and share the gospel of Jesus Christ in the world. God said in 1 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, if my people, that's the church, who are called by my name, will humble themselves in prayer and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. My brothers and my sisters, ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to reach America, we need to understand that we are part of of what God is doing and where God is doing it through local churches across this country. And just as IMB sends missionaries across the world, the North American Mission Board uh, uh, through Kevin Ezel sends uh, missionaries across America uh, sharing the gospel through the law so that every time someone across America, particularly one of our sin cities, uh, one of our uh, uh, focus cities, receives the gospel and accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Well, guess, guess what? Because you're part of the cooperative program giving, Texas Baptist, you are part of that person's salvation. You are part of the life change that happens in their life. So, so when lost folk are, are saved in Las Vegas, you are part of that. When lost folk are saved in Chicago, you are part of that. When lost folk are saved in New York, you are part of that. Why? Because your CP giving helps to fund not only world missionaries, but local missionaries here in America. Every dollar you, you give, every dollar your church give to CP. A percentage of that goes to NAM for local missions. So in June of this year in Houston, Texas, when Kevin Ezell stands before the convention and gives a report of the North American Mission Board and tells of all the lost folk that have been saved uh, in Chicago, that have been saved in New York, that have been saved uh, in New Orleans, that have been saved uh, in Las Vegas, you can stick your chest out. You can put a smile on your face because even though you wasn't in New York, you wasn't in Chicago, you wasn't in Las Vegas, but your cooperative program funds were there, and you are part of those people giving their lives to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But not only just the NAM mission, also disaster relief. And I can testify about this for a while, but we got to get back to the evangelical conference. I'm a, I know firsthand how the CP funds uh, 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 helped us with disaster relief down in the city of New Orleans. I, th there's no other organization that does quite disaster relief like the Southern Baptist does. I remember in our city of New Orleans, our, our, it's taken a long time trying to rebuild our cities, but, but Southern Baptists came from across the country. I mean, you sent your college students, you sent your high school students, you sent your senior soldiers, y'all sent folk from all over the state of Texas to the city of New Orleans, all over the country. People came from the Southern Baptist Convention with their yellow shirts on, and they worked diligently to rebuild our city, so much so that in the local newspaper of the city of New Orleans, the time picking that's a predominantly Catholic city. The editorial page of the, of the paper one day gave a report because of how slow the process of the city was rebuilding. The local editor of, of, of New Orleans gave a report, an editorial, and he said in the editorial, I quote, if Southern Baptists were responsible for building New Orleans, we would have been rebuilt a long time ago. Isn't that amazing? 
And it's all because of your giving to the cooperative program. I never will forget, Dr. Richard, my wife and I were living in Birmingham, Alabama with our daughter, and we were coming back and forth, back and forth, trying to build our house and uh, gut out our house. And we were about to pay a guy $4,000 on a Friday to, to, uh, uh, to gut out our house to the studs, to take out all the, the, uh, uh, the, all the material, all the furniture. We had five feet of water in our home, and we had to get, get it gut out. And we was about to pay a guy $4,000 that Friday. That Wednesday, we was leaving to go get something to eat. Uh, and here comes a big old truck with Oklahoma Baptist Convention on the side with a van in the back. And, my, and they stopped on the corner and asked my wife, do you know where Brother Fred lives? And my wife said, uh, yes, Brother Fred lives right here. Say, I'm his wife. Say, say, we from Oklahoma Baptist Convention, and we've come to gut his house out. Whoa, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's because uh, Southern Baptists gave to the cooperative program so that people in Oklahoma who didn't even know me came to gut out my home, and they did this across the city of New Orleans, and that's because of the CP giving. But not only uh, home missionaries, not only disaster relief, another part of our internal Per hand of a CP giving goes toward the financial assistance to over, listen to this, 17,000 seminary students in our six seminaries. Think about that. Your giving to a cooperative program assists 17,000 seminary students in our six seminaries to help equip and train them who, are, who will soon be future pastors and future ministers of education and future ministers of music on staff in churches right here in the state of Texas. So every time you give to CP, every time you give to the operative program, you're helping students at Southwestern Seminary in Fort Worth, students at New Orleans Seminary in New Orleans, students at Southeast Seminary in Wake Forest, students at Southern Seminary in Louisville, students at, at Midwestern Seminary in Kansas City, students at Golden Gate Seminary in San Francisco. Every week those schools uh, get a share of CP money that you give in your churches on a regular basis. And, my, and Dr. Chuck Kelly, the president of New Orleans Seminary, when he heard I was coming here to give this talk today, this speech today at this luncheon, he told me personally to tell Southern Baptist of Texas, thank you for what you're doing for the students at New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. Also, another part of your internal, internal reason for good giving to the CP, that your local state convention, the Southern Baptist of Texas Convention, can plant churches, can train uh, 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 future leaders can train churches across this wonderful state of Texas in Sunday school, in evangelism, in evangelism, in youth ministry, in children ministry, in discipleship, to provide information and inspiration uh, like we're doing here these days uh, here at this convention. Many of you may, have, may not have noticed, but on your program, on your bulletin, it says on the front and on the back, uh, made possible through the cooperative program giving. These two wonderful days of instruction and inspiration are made possible because you have given to the cooperative program in your state. And we thank you. We thank you for it. Ladies and gentlemen, there may be somebody here at this conference who is being equipped and trained to lead a ministry years later in this state in Texas. Maybe a little boy running around this convention. Maybe a, a, a young a preacher boy running around this convention. Well, one day, because of your giving, Lead, lead churches, lead seminaries in our Southern Baptist Convention and particularly in this state. I saw it happen in the state of Louisiana. Back in 1970, a struggling Southern Baptist church was about to close its doors. Dr. Richard, they were about to shut down. It was in a transitional neighborhood. Whites moved out, white flight, blacks moved in. And instead of selling that 250-seat sanctuary, an educational building to the highest bidder or to the highest or uh, 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 to someone who would turn it to something else. That small handful of Anglo congregation decided, no, we can't reach this community, but we know somebody can come in here and reach them. So those handful of Anglo members gave the building to the local association to be used for the people, the African-American people in that community through their cooperative program fund. That white congregation decided that the building could be used for the people in this community. So through cooperative program funds were used to keep that building open. Cooperative program funds were used uh, to pay the light bill and to pay the gas bill and to pay the AC bill. Cooperative funds were used to uh, uh, keep that building open. And so that in 1986, that struggling mission church of about 50 members uh, 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 went on 
on the streets uh, and elected and elected a street preacher as their pastor because this young preacher led, uh, uh, had limited experience as a pastor. He asked the local association, the Baptist Association of Greater New Orleans, to help us out to get seek training. We needed help. We didn't know exactly what we needed to do on our own. So that local preacher went to the local association and asked them for some help. And because of the CP giving of the churches in that community, that local association came to that church, that struggling church, and trained church leaders. That local association provided training through the carpenter program, through, uh, provided black parties through the carpenter program, uh, provided leadership training through the carpenter program, provided that pastor to go away to retreats and conferences and schools uh, to learn so that he can be equipped to lead that church in the area of leadership as pastor. And it was all done because of the cooperative program giving. And before long, that church was leading the state convention in baptism. Before long, that small church began to grow, and it began leading the church uh, of the state convention in Sunday school attention and, and attendance. Before long, that young pastor was sharing his testimony across the cities and across the state of Louisiana and across evangelism conferences all across the country. And eventually, that small church that was about to close down, that was about to close his doors, uh, it became an autonomous church. Then it began to grow, and then thousands, and then thousands, and then thousands. And then that church, because knowing where that church came from, started 13 mission churches itself to help other people in the community. As a matter of fact, this African-American church was the first African-American church to sponsor two Anglo churches in the city of New Orleans because it intended to give back. And that young preacher, ladies and gentlemen, that young street preacher became known across the Southern Baptist Convention. Ladies and gentlemen, that church was the Franklin Avenue Baptist Church, and that young street preacher is Fred Luter, who is now the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. And it was all because somebody decided to give this church a chance through cooperative program. My brothers and my sisters, as I go to my seat, I'm a living testimony that cooperative program giving works. Let me encourage you as I come to closer to, to, to consider seriously what you and your church can give to the cooperative program. Every dollar you give will help send missionaries far and home. Every dollar you give to our program will train future church leaders. Every dollar you give to our cooperative program will plant churches. Every CP money you give will be, will be given to establish churches and establish events throughout the state of Texas and help this state and help my state and help our nation and help our world to carry out the great commission and the great commandment of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then finally, I told you at the beginning there were three reasons why your church should put the CP in your church budget. The first reason is an external reason to reach the world for Jesus Christ. The second reason is an internal reason to reach your state and reach America for Jesus Christ. But then the third and final reason is an eternal reason. There will be people in heaven, Southern Baptists, who will get to heaven because you gave through the cooperative program, through your missions and through your ministry. And one day you may meet somebody in heaven and say, I am here today. I am saved today. I gave my life today because you decided to give to the cooperative program. May God bless you and may God keep you as you give to the cooperative program. I love you. God loves you too.